I'm Captain Nemo on the high seas. Oh, we got a we got a storm. Whoa! 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 Well, hey there, Timmy. Gee, who are you, Mister? Did I scare you? <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, you did. Well, I'm just your friendly neighborhood narrator. Oh, okay. So what do you like to do for fun, Timmy? I like to smile and play kickball with my friends and watch TV with my family. That sounds swell. Say, do you want to learn more about television? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to teach you everything there is to know about the history of colored television. Would you like that? Do I ever? Well then, follow me. Whoa, where, where are we, mister? You're on a farm, Timmy. The year is 1921, and that boy standing over there is Philo Farnsworth. He's just now beginning to scribble out his ideas of his image Aha! dissector. I've got it. If I use a lens to direct light into a glass camera tube, then I can cut and project one line at a time in an ongoing system. Gee Willikers, how old is this guy? Well, he's 14 at the moment, but now let's fast forward six years. Aha! In order to spread my idea all over the world, I need to get it patented. Yes, that's it! Patented! Mr. Farnsworth, you've been granted the patent of your television system. Yes! Good for him. Now he's ready to... Ho ho! Hold on there, Timmy. Philo was unable to transmit human images because the lights were too hot. But in 1930... Aha! Finally! For the longest time, I wasn't able to transmit anything onto the TV screen because the lights were so hot. But now, thanks to the advances in technology, I can finally transmit my wife on television! Okay, I'm ready. Where are we now, mister? We're in the year 1949. Less than a million people now have television sets in their own homes. Everyone liked having their own televisions, but a couple companies wanted to invent something more special. Color! Color? That's what I watch! Exactly! CBS and RCA had been experimenting with technology that would permit color television. That's right. CBS had a model based on the Nipkow wheel developed by physicist Peter Goldmark. The Nipkow wheel had perforated holes through which a beam of light shone to scan an image that would be transmitted. At the same time, RCA had an alternative electrical model based on Farnsworth's work and the NTSC standard. Who, which company won? That's an interesting question, Timmy. The Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, approved of CBS's system in 1950, but in 1953 they reversed their approval and agreed with RCA's model that will be used in analog televisions for years to come. Why did the FCC change their mind? I can answer that. The RCA television sets were compatible for black and white, but the CBS sets were not, which means the audience members would have to use two different television sets in their own homes, which means they would have to use black and white television sets for one of them, and the other set would have to use color television programs, just like this one. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. It just starts in black and white. Whoa, that was swell. Yes, NBC was the first broadcasting company to air their logo in color. But it wasn't the first company to air its program. It wasn't? That triumph belongs to CBS with its variety show titled Premiere, which premiered on June 25th, 1951. Everybody must have been excited. Actually, most viewers weren't able to watch it in color because they didn't own a colored set. Why was that? Because there were few sales of colored television. In fact, by the end of 1957, only 150,000 colored sets had been sold. Why didn't everybody go out and buy colored TVs? When colored sets were first marketed, in March of 1954, they cost $1,295. 
that was way too expensive for an average family to afford. Well, for people who did have color TV sets, what do they think of it? At first, most viewers did not like color television. Listen to what these people have to say. I can't focus on what I'm watching or listening to. There's too much color. I do not believe color television will succeed any further than it already has. As far as I'm concerned, it is a flop. I like how I can watch my favorite show, Rocky and Bullwinkle, in color, but I don't like how I can watch A Rebel Without a Cause in color. Now that I can watch Walter Cronkite in color, I feel I can trust him more because he's more real. Color equals reality. Nothing in our world is black and white, except for television. But, in t but now that television is in color, it's more realistic and relatable. Oh, it all makes sense now. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, it does, Timmy. Yes, it does. I thought everything was hunky-dory in the color world. Not quite, Timmy. Believe it or not, there were some problems with the audiences of television. Whoa! Television has a problem with me? Perhaps not to you personally, Timmy, but there were some people who caused television companies to have problems. In 1954, only 8,050 sets were produced in color. However, that was not enough for the entire nation. Only 8,050? That's right, but that wasn't all. Another problem was that NBC was the only broadcasting company to air all its shows in color. Well, that's why I can never talk about Bonanza with my friends, because they don't own colored television sets. I think NBC is wasting their money. By producing only shows in color, a majority of the audiences in the United States don't own color colored television sets. Ha <laughs> ha. Now you're catching on, Timmy. <laughs> In 1959, Bonanza was the first television show to be filmed and aired in color. Its popularity grew over the next few years, and because of this, more audiences sought out to watch the show on a colored set. Jiminy Crickets! All this information is boggling my mind. I still, I still want to know how, color, how TVs make all that color. I can answer that. Inside a television set, there is a device called a cathode ray tube. This creates beams of electrons in three different colors, red, blue, and green. Using only these colors, but in different combinations and amounts, any color can be made. The back of a television screen is covered in dots of phosphor. When struck by the colored electron beams, the phosphor gives off light. In this way, little dots of color are created on the television screen. The human brain forms these dots into a whole picture. Whoa! That's amazing! Color is, uh, color is opening up a lot of possibilities! You're right, Timmy. Because of the introduction of color television, CBS and NBC continue to be rivals to this day. In addition, small affiliates of large networks like NBC began broadcasting in color. Color television also encouraged companies to compete for better resolution and screen brightness. Because of this competition, consumers had a wide range of choices. This, in turn, made the price of color televisions decrease. By 1964, color televisions cost only $495. That takes us to the end of our journey of color television throughout the years. We've learned about the history of television as a whole, how color was introduced, the public's response to color, the problems it created, its process, and how color television changed the media world. Wow, mister, I learned a lot. Now I'm going to go home and watch television. <laughs>